Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Emi Chicken from Team Pandori. Do you play Fightcade? And wish it was in a Pandora box type of system? Well today, we may have a solution for you. These guys at Bowerly Animation Technology are advertising a Pandora box that can play online. So now we can play with others. My right hand can finally have a rest. Here's the box we got. Sonic Boom. Inside the box, we get... Screws. We got what? I'll go get my brass knuckles. The boards came in bubble wrap, with no sign of instruction manual. They do, however, look very clean. You could eat sushi off that backside. We have headers for speaker. I like header. For the power bits. The control interface for the Pandora harness. Around here we have the memory chips. One gigabyte of RAM in total. But this one has four gigabytes of NAND and a Wi-Fi chip. This wire fan antenna, we're going to move it away from the board because we don't want it grinding or shorting out. I can grind all night long. From the back, we have the 12 volt DC in, HDMI, VGA, audio output, volume roller, settings button, and two USB ports. And this very clean butt. I will be licking it when you are not looking, and yeah. Pulling off the tape here, we can find the micro SD. Included is a 64 gigabyte Kyoxia. It's Toshiba. Let's get to the specs. This board closely mimics the Pandora Games 3D. The memory, CPU and GPU are the same. We have 4GB of onboard NAND which is great and 1080p is nice to see. But we are concerned with having no option for Ethernet cable. If you want to use the case of an older Pandora box, make sure the port holes are the same. Sometimes you'll have a board like the DX with 3 USB ports. This model won't fit in that. Same goes for one of these bar tops. If you have a Pandora Games 3D board, Treasure, Key 7 or something like that, you'll be able to quickly change the board. Just be sure that the ports are the same and you should be good to go. Plug in the controller cable. If you want to use a switch at the back, take out this jumper. Just going to move the Wi-Fi antenna out of the way. We should be good to go. Boot up takes this long. What's brown and sticky? A stick. I will be here all night. Like any Pandora box, it goes straight into the games list. No foreplay. <laughs> Gonna check out the options. As we can't read Chinese, we're going to just flip this to the English setting. Usual contenders are here, like IO test. This is for checking the buttons hooked up to the internal control interface. Next up, input settings. With the first option, we can change the input map per system. We've seen this earlier on the Treasure 2, which means we should be able to set up all buttons for the N64. We have a similar option for the USB gamepad, and here we define the player that it controls. As there's only one selection here, it's safe to assume that we can only use one USB controller. Game server setting has options related to the coin usage and the way that the arcade operates. In the game settings, we can hide the games or change difficulty, but there's no option here to actually delete the games. Other than that, you may want to update lobby servers before you play online. Graphic settings, we have the option to add scanline 1, 2 or 3, none of which work. Image enhancement, however, does change things. We can choose between off, linear, and HQ. Let's take a look. So this is with all options off. And while we can see the pixels are sharp, the screen is stretched to the full size of your monitor. Linear acts as a smooth option. It blurs the pixels. It's like being punched in the face. HQ setting turns lovely pixel art into an oil painting. Getting back to the settings menu, we can flick through the wallpapers. It's quite a nice assortment, and we've seen some of these in earlier treasure and key units. 
Wallpaper Blur does this. Language options, we have English, Korean, Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. In network, we can choose our wireless router, but it can only find the legacy wireless standards. Push this, and then type in your password, and we're in. Next option is Game Store. Most of this is already on the device, and there's not really much to choose from. But when you do find something interesting, the download will just not work. Lovely. This looks fun. A dating simulator with pretty girls. Ball sacks. Next up is the accounts menu. Here we can assign our nickname and avatar for our online persona. One more option here is the purchase. What these points are used for, we'll check later on. The games list is set into two groups, 3D games and 2D games. 3D in this case means games for the console. So we'll have Dreamcast, PSP, PlayStation, whereas the other list is full of arcade titles. It's a bit of a mess and all over the place. Using the C button, we can add games to a favorites list. There is a tab for recent games played, favorites, and search. We can either search by title or select the game genre at the top. The search result is on the left where you can choose the game and it'll start. This search menu has crashed our machine five times in testing. Next tab is for Netplay. Here we have a selection of two servers. One states low latency and the other with a 30 minute time limit. This is where we'll need to use the points that we have in our account. When selecting server, we can either join or create. Here we can see the games that we can play and it seems limited to only 103 of the arcade titles. On average, there's around six to eight rooms where the games are being played. Most of the time they're full, unless you have a buddy who's created a room and has forgotten the password. Let's join a game. It takes around 50 seconds to get to this screen. You get a warning with missing assets. Then Netplay disconnected. We then tried creating a room with one of the most influential fighting games of all time. It's shocking to see that all the characters look like ours. When you choose the online option, the HQ filter is forced on. I had this game on for one hour. No one joined. There is also noticeable control latency in an online game. Compare it to offline with HQ filter off, as well as Street Fighter Alpha. Night and day. As always, you'll need to rebind the controls if you want to flick back and forth from King of Fighters to Street Fighter. What a pain in the bum hole. Connecting the USB cable from the bottom port to a PC, we can use it as a controller. Player 1 works fine, but Player 2 cannot do diagonals. We tested a few controllers. Xbox pads work great. This Hori fight stick thing works good. This AliExpress fake Astro City thing works good too, as does anything with the Dragon USB encoder board. Wicked Gamer and Collector's favorite pad works. Yay. Both the gray or brown 8-bit dough dongles work great too. The black dongle, however, has issues. Sorry, buddy. This USB PlayStation control pad from the PlayStation Classic works. But this PlayStation 3 pad says no. The usual cheapity cheap clone pads are kind of undecided between yes and no. These two buttons at the back just don't work. And lastly, if you have a Mayflash dongle and your controller can hook up to this, you should be good to go. To the game testing. Okay, so mid-game you cannot access dip switches by pressing the settings button. But this plays okay. Next up, Total Classic. Alter Beast. NBA Jam. Dodon Patch. Even though the Tate games do not rotate, the aspect ratio looks pretty good.
Similar with Strikers 1945. First up for the console list, Tekken 5 PSP. First thing you may notice is there's a weird video jitter. It keeps on shaking the screen a bit. Outside that, the buttons are working fine. And there are no graphical issues with the later stages. Final round. Tekken 6, however, has the leg jitter. It might be difficult to see, but for both Tekken 5 and 6, it is not a smooth frame rate. Much like the Pandora Games 3D, we can press start on player 2 and join in. This basically simulates the network feature of a PSP and emulates ad hoc for player 2. It's a pretty nice feature to have, but as we said before, we don't have a solid frame rate. Would you stop playing with yourself? It is very disturbing. Ridge Racer for the PSP. Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. Honestly, I'm just awful at this game. And God of War. I don't know why this is on here, it's just unplayably slow. Just highlight them. Tekken 2, PlayStation. Again, the buttons are bound correctly. Just like seven of nine. The PlayStation memory card, however, no, doesn't work. If you want to save your progress, you'll need to use load and save state. Next up, Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast. So slow. With Kasumi, I would take it slow by the fireplace with a kit cart. Even though Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is on the system, it is the worst looking and performing yet. We know from previous Pandora boxes that the Mali 450 GPU has issues with scaling some of these graphics. This could have been prevented by using the Flycast emulator and would also be able to have the Naomi version of this game. Killer Instinct Gold. Afterburner. Even though we've selected all filters to be off, yep, paint mode. And Mega Man 2. This is actually running too fast. If you listen to the music, it's totally off. Here's a Game Boy game. I've no idea. Let's check the micro SD. It's formatted to XFAT, and we have 1.72 GB free. We found some Dreamcast related stuff in the DCV4 folder in emu.cfg. We can see that screen stretching is at 115, and screen scaling is at 33. We try changing the values here, and moving in some memory card data. No good. We know that Dead or Alive plays like bum, so we'll try switching in this game here. On boot up, we can copy in save game data. Just need to rename the file. And now loading Dead or Alive 2 gives us this screen. Clicking on the memory card button at the bottom left, we can import some saved data from all of these titles. The memory card of the Dreamcast is likely to be on the internal NAND of the Pandora box. This will be shared with every game that uses this emulator. Loading up the game from TDC Final, we can see all the characters are unlocked, the graphics look a little finer, and, yes, it is a little slower. Mali issues are still here. But at least, it doesn't look like this. It still plays like vomit. Time for the pros and the cons. It's quite nice to see that we've got a Pandora box trying something new. Online play. This box also has good controller support. However, the cons greatly outweigh the pros. Honestly said, this board is a bust. It's the console of Troy of the Pandoras. <sighs> it's a shame to see this board with so much promise deliver so little. Anything is better than this.
Dun, dun, dun. As always, a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are the best, and we still can't thank you enough for the ongoing support. We review products, create guides, and try fixing things that ain't right. So can you fix this box? Ah, uh, m- maybe. So there's a chance for me to get with the girl with the big melons. Um, someday, John. Someday. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and do all of them lovely button things. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra.